Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com for premium picks, DwyerVIP.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, not all rematches are created equally. When you look at the underlying fight, the first time the two fighters faced each other, you need to figure out whether or not the knockout punch, if there was a knockout, was the result of luck or was the result of patience, practice, and experience, right? If it's the former, then anything can happen in the rematch. You need to discount the underlying fight. If it's the latter, if the winner actually had a method to his madness, where he was able to figure out how to deliver that KO blow, then you need to go with the winner of the first fight. With regard to American heavyweights, Seth Mitchell and Jonathan Banks, I've looked at that first fight several times. Because it's my belief that the result was a function of Jonathan Banks timing and counterpunching Seth Mitchell. I like Jonathan Banks in the rematch. Let me point out, here on YouTube I picked Jonathan Banks, then an underdog, in the underlying fight. I believe Banks, quite frankly, is a technician in this fight. I believe he knows how to time and beat Seth Mitchell. Let's talk about it. Seth Mitchell is a knockout artist. He has a very good right hand. He tries to overwhelm you with physicality right? He imposes himself on you. But we need to understand who Jonathan Banks is. As I make this video, you need to realize that Jonathan Banks is actually the trainer of Vladimir Klitschko. Understand too that Jonathan Banks for years was the protege of Emmanuel Stewart. In other words, this is a guy who views himself as having the requisite skill to actually offer advice to people like the heavyweight champion. The reason that's a bit astonishing is the fact that Jonathan Banks himself is a heavyweight and yet he's giving training advice, in fact he's serving as the trainer for someone in his division who holds one of the titles. Now what I like with Banks, and you need to be aware of the fact that Jonathan Banks lost in the past to Tomas Ademek. What I like with Banks is the patience. Seth Mitchell tries to turn up the temperature in the ring early. He's coming in throwing hooks. Dare I say it, Seth Mitchell is, in my opinion, a mid-range hooker. Right? He hits hard enough to knock you out. What I like with Banks is he has the patience to let the hooks fly by, to stay in the pocket, and to throw crisp counters that quite frankly, in my opinion, Seth Mitchell is not prepared to deal with. The bet I'm recommending, and keep in mind the casinos have both of these guys as co-favorites. In fact, when the line opened, the casinos had Seth Mitchell, the loser of the first fight, as the favorite. The money has come in on the fight and has shifted where now both guys, you get about the same odds. The bet I'm recommending is that you take Jonathan Banks to win the fight, hedged against Seth Mitchell by KO. In my opinion, if these guys stand and trade, Bob and Weave, Jonathan Banks has the advantage. 
Fans focus on offense. Banks throws great hooks and can knock you down. Most of his wins are by knockout. But gamblers need to focus on defense. Right? Jonathan Banks, in my opinion, is vastly superior to Seth Mitchell defensively. He's a guy who can hang around, dodge your punches, hit you with clean counters. Right? I like Jonathan Banks in this fight. I think I think Seth Mitchell, quite frankly, is overrated. Let me go one step further here. Seth Mitchell had a rematch clause in his underlying contract. Many people, I can imagine many fighters with egos, believe that if they lose the first fight, they need to avenge the loss immediately. Right? Absolutely no space between fighting. What I want people to do is I want people to go back. I want people to look at some of the great trilogies in boxing history. Go back and look at Ali Fraser. What you're going to find out is that after Ali lost to Fraser the first time, he fought several other people. Right? I personally believe it's a mistake, even if a title is on the line, to give an immediate rematch to a guy who has just knocked you out. Right? Jonathan Banks, at the end of the day, in the back of his head, knows that he can knock out Seth Mitchell. Been there, done that. Right? Seth Mitchell frigo reasons might feel that he has to prove to himself and prove to the fans that he's better than this opponent. Understand, he might be if he works out the kinks in a few fights and figures out how to deal with the guy who can stay in the pocket and can actually time him and counter him. But to do that in your next fight, in my opinion, is foolhardy. Sometimes these rematches work out. More times than not, they don't. Right? Thomas Hearns did not rush into a rematch with Ray Leonard. Right? Their second fight took place several years later. Right? My point to you is that if you're a fighter who's been knocked out in the first fight, there might be a reason why. Perhaps your defense isn't what you thought it was. Perhaps if you're a mid-range hooker like Seth Mitchell, if the other guy is able to dodge your punches, perhaps you are wide open, as Seth Mitchell is, for counters. So to sum up, I'm expecting a repeat of the first fight. I'm expecting the underdog in the first fight to again rule the day. I like Jonathan Banks in this fight. If I had one fight to if I had one pick to make, I would take Jonathan Banks to win this fight. The bet I'm gonna do at the casino is to take Banks to win this fight, hedged with Seth Mitchell by Kale. If this fight goes several rounds, I'm expecting Jonathan Banks to assert his technical superiority. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me say this too in closing. In America right now, our national pride has been hurt. We're looking for actively the great American heavyweight. We're overvaluing limited heavyweights who have had crowd-pleasing dramatic knockouts. If you're a gambler, don't make that mistake. You have to ignore patriotism. You have to go with skill level. In my opinion, Jonathan Banks, simply put, is more skilled than Seth Mitchell. I believe there's very little Seth Mitchell can do in one training camp to offset his shortcomings in terms of being wide open for counters. Let me hear from you. Thanks for watching.